This is going to be John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. We're going to talk about Jesus versus false gods. Idols or false gods are a huge problem today for almost every person. And anything we put ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ becomes a false god. So going through John chapter 1 verse by verse, we can see how they can't compare to the true God. Looking at verses 1 through 5, let's pick out some great things about the Lord Jesus Christ. Number 1, Jesus Christ is before the beginning, while false idols or false gods are not from the beginning. John 1, 1 through 2 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. When Jesus Christ was born as a man, that wasn't the beginning of Jesus Christ. He isn't a created God. He never had a beginning. Rather, he was here before the beginning, and the only reason there was ever a beginning to begin with. Uh, John 8, 58 said, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Notice him showing the deity of, of himself. He said, I am. When God talked to Moses back in Exodus, he says, I am that I am. And Jesus said himself, he was here before Abraham. Abraham was wrote about way back in the book of Genesis, way back sometime before any human was created. There was still a Godhead. I don't believe God was just sitting around in the darkness. He was doing something. I don't know what he was doing, but maybe he will tell us one day when we get to heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ was there in that eternity past because he was with God and he was God and he still is God. Revelation 1.8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Although you can't see God, he is there and always watching. He is invisible and God is a spirit. He is sitting up in the third heaven in eternity. He had no beginning. And the false gods you worship did have a beginning. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. These material gods here on earth have a beginning, and they are temporal. The secret sins you have and the pleasure you get from them are only last for a season. Your cars will rust. Your money will crinkle up and fade. But God, who you can't see, is eternal. And Jesus Christ has always been here and always will be here. Why not worship Him? Number two, Jesus Christ speaks to His followers with words. False gods are dumb and can't speak. They are dumb meeting They can't speak to you. Jesus Christ can listen to you talk and talks back to you when you read the Bible. Notice verse 1 in John chapter 1 calls him the Word. Uh, 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Jesus Christ is the Word in that verse. A lot of people get in arguments over the Godhead. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I really try not to get into it too much and think so much about it because it's way over my head. All I know is there is one God and He can manifest Himself in more than one way. He can be in however many places He wants to be at one time and He has a body, a soul, and a spirit. When Jesus Christ was getting baptized, the body was in the water His Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove, and the Father spake to him from heaven. In that scene, you have the whole Godhead working in a different way at the same time. And that's really as far as I like to take it. He is one in three, and three in one. There is one God. He shows himself in three ways. While we have a body, soul, and a spirit, I can't make my soul and spirit do other things. I can control my body. But God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, they can all be doing whatever they want to at once. God can do what He wants. 
I can't explain the Godhead. I probably will never ever be able to explain it until I'm with Jesus Christ and He can explain it to me more perfectly. Anything beyond that, I just say I can't explain it. But in that Godhead, Jesus Christ is referred to as the Word. He is the living Word. He said, I am He that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 19.13 says, And He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and His name is called the Word of God. As we said before, Jesus was here from the beginning, and notice it mentions Him in creation. Genesis 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. When it says, And God said, that is a reference to Jesus Christ, because He is the Word. So in the first three verses of Genesis 1, you have the Godhead present in creation. Because it says, in the beginning, God. There you have the Father. The Spirit of God moved. There you have the Holy Spirit. And then it says, and God said. There you have the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are all three present there. The God of heaven, as the Word, speaks to His creation. And this is how He tells us how to live, tells us our future, gives us the gospel, tells us how to treat each other and comforts us. He tells us how to clean up our life through His Word. Psalms 119.9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. God speaks to us, and false idols don't speak. Hebrews 1.1 through 2 says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake, and time passed unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. God spoke to man even in the beginning. He spoke to Adam directly. He moved on to using visions and dreams. He has appeared to man as the angel of the Lord and talked to them that way. He came down and manifested himself in the flesh and walked and talked with us. And now we have a King James Bible that says everything he wants us to know. But your car can't talk to you. Your house can't talk to you. Your career can't speak to you. Money really doesn't talk. And celebrities and athletes, they can talk, but they can't talk to you. And you can't pray to Michael Jordan or LeBron, LeBron James or Tiger Woods. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 2 says, You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Deuteronomy 4.28 says, And there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Your false idols can't even hear you. The Bible says God hears you. Exodus 2.24 says, And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Revelation 9:20 20 through 21 and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts so your idols they can't see, they can't hear, they can't walk, they can't talk. Yet you worship them over the Lord Jesus Christ. But number three, Jesus Christ is God with a big G, while false gods are gods with a little g. John 1, 1 through 2 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So Jesus Christ is God, big G, manifested in the flesh. First Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. When people fail to speak on the mystery of godliness, they will start forgetting the deity of Jesus Christ. They will start believing He was just a good man or a good prophet, as all the cults teach. 
Jesus Christ had God's blood running through his veins. The book of John doesn't have a genealogy because it isn't focusing on the man side of Jesus Christ. It is focusing on his Godhood that doesn't have a beginning. Jesus Christ as a man was born. Jesus Christ as God was never born. I once got in a debate with a drunk man on the telephone. And sometimes people like to talk about the Bible when they get drunk for some reason. But I was witnessing to this person and we were talking about Jesus Christ and I said, Jesus is God. He said, no, Jesus wasn't God. Jesus was his son. And he didn't realize the fact that God, since God was Jesus' father, that proved that Jesus Christ is God himself. If a man begets another man, then God begets God. And when Jesus Christ claimed to be the Son of God, he was claiming to be God. And that's proved in the Bible. In John 5.18 it says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Philippians 2.6 Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus Christ didn't have any problem with making himself equal with God, although the new versions will make you think that he didn't think he was God. It will say something like, he didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, which that's a subtle attack on the deity of Jesus Christ. And then 1 John 1, 1 through 3 says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God with a big G. Your false gods are gods with a little g. Some people called Michael Jordan the black Jesus because they make him a god. I agree Michael Jordan is a god, but he is a god with a little g. And even all these false gods, they die one day. They're not eternal. They're not immortal. And even the false gods that were immortal, they die like men. Psalms 82, 6 through 7 says, I have said ye are gods, little g, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So even any immortal false god will die like a man and go to hell. Exodus 20 and verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods, little g gods, before me. There's only one big G God, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, Jesus is the creator. False gods are created. John 1, 3 says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. If you're going to remember your creator, then you need to remember who it was that created you. Whoever puts an idol before Jesus Christ is described in Romans one twenty five. It says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Creator. He was involved in the creation. The Bible testifies to that fact over and over. In Hebrews 1, 1 through 2, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Jesus Christ was there in the creation. Colossians 1, 15 through 17, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. 
And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So all things were created by him and for him. For our pleasure, we, for his pleasure we are and were created. All of these material things people worship are only here because God allowed them to be here. Man may have formed them with his wicked hands, but God supplied the material for those things to be made. The people who are worshipped are only here because God let them be born. If you are worshipping another person, you are worshipping someone who will be judged by Almighty God at the judgment seat. Why not worship the God who made everything and who made every person and give glory to the God of heaven? When you worship a material thing, you are worshipping something man-made. Isaiah 2.8 says, Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Why would you want to worship something that can't even move itself? Jesus Christ is the creator. Idols are created. Number five, Jesus Christ leads to life. Idols lead to death. Jesus Christ is life itself. He did die, but he voluntarily died so that you could have the same life in yourself. 1 Corinthians fifteen three through 4 says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Since Jesus Christ is life itself, he couldn't stay dead. If you, if you believe in him, you get life in yourself. He comes in you to live. Since he is life, it only makes sense he leads to life. And since false gods all face death, they all die like men, it only makes sense they lead you to death. Anyone who points you towards anything other than Jesus Christ is working for death. They are leading you down the broad way to hell and death. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Everyone who is concerned about self-preservation. Everyone just wants to stay alive. Yet they turn to the things that bring death. If you live for the flesh, ye shall die. If you die without Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Jesus Christ has life without blood because he is life itself. If you believe on him, then one day you will have life without blood when you get a glorified body. At the rapture, you will leave your sinless or sinful blood behind. You will get a sinless body, and you will leave that pool of blood behind and all those material things that were just keeping you living for the flesh. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 5, 11 through 12 says, And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. John five twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John 10, 8, or 10 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus Christ is life. False idols are death and lead to death. Jesus saves and gives life, but your idol can't give life. It can't save. Jeremiah 2.27 says, Saying to a stock, Thou art my father, and to a stone, Thou hast brought me forth. The evolutionists think they came from a rock. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. A false idol can't save you. Jesus Christ can save you. Number six, Jesus Christ is the light of men. Idols lead to darkness and blackness. John 1, 4 through 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus Christ is so much light that one day there won't need to be any sun present. Revelation 22 5 says, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, and neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. 1 John 1 7, 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. The created gods and idols lead to darkness. Satan is the power of darkness. He keeps you in the dark when it comes to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because he doesn't want the gospel, the light of the glorious gospel, to shine unto you. Darkness is associated with death. At funerals you wear black. Wicked rock music that's out of hell is associated with black clothes. They wear black fingernail polish. Uh, they get on dark stages. The wicked Halloween holiday is associated with black cats and black robes. Seems like all the things associated with the devil are associated with black. One day, Jesus Christ is coming back on a white horse, the opposite of black. And he is going to have all the God-haters faces covered with blackness. Joel chapter 2, 5 through 6 says, Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. People wanted blackness and darkness, and Satan... So Jesus Christ rubs their face in it at the second coming. If you don't want to be on the losing side of this battle, then you need to believe the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. It says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner you are, and believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, and you can be saved and on your way to heaven.